Welcome everyone to another edition of the Classic Comic Archive, a series where I recap and review many of Marvel Comics' most seminal early issues. Our story for today is Uncanny X-Men issue 5, cover dated May of 1964. The issue was written by Stan Lee, drawn by Jack Kirby, inked by Paul Reinman, and lettered by Sam Rosen. Our story begins with a striking splash page, showing our titular team as they're returning home from a battle with Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. While the X-Men were successful in foiling the villain's plot, they failed to capture his Brotherhood or protect Professor X from a bomb that has nullified his telepathic powers. But it also knocked him unconscious, and thus the X-Men are gently bringing him inside to rest while they decide what to do about the evil mutants who are still on the loose. They all seem to agree that they need to continue their fight against them, but fear that they'll fail without the guidance of a leader like Professor X. Thus the Beast speaks up and declares that they'll need to choose a new leader. But before he has a chance to elaborate, he suddenly hears a car approaching their school. Seeing that they rarely have any visitors, the team fears that it's the evil mutants who have followed them home. But the Beast eases the tension as he peeks through the window and sees that it's just Marvel Girl's parents who have come to visit her. Yet the team is startled nonetheless and begin racing out of their costumes and into civilian clothes. For Iceman it's a simple matter, as his costume is just a layer of ice that he can easily melt away. But it's a more delicate process for the Angel, who has to tuck his wings under a hidden harness. The Beast changes back normally, but interestingly remarks that he's glad to once again be Hank McCoy, as his British codename is a disservice to his true status as a brilliant honor student. Meanwhile Cyclops is trading out his combat visor for a pair of red-tinted glasses, as an already changed Marvel girl greets her parents at the door. They can only stay for a few minutes, but take the time to introduce themselves to their daughter's classmates. Notably absent is the professor, who Warren claims is away. He doesn't go into any further detail, but apparently doesn't need to, as Jean's parents accept the excuse and remark that they're very pleased with their daughter's progress at his school. Yet it's then that the X-Men's secret is nearly exposed, as Jean's mother reaches to inspect Scott's rather unique glasses. He of course shudders away, lest she accidentally release a torrent of his destructive optic energy. He claims that he's suffering from an eye infection and wouldn't want to startle them with its unsettling sight. But the matter isn't lingered on, as Hank suddenly changes the subject by ushering the pair into the danger room. Yet he claims that it's a gymnasium and explains away its emptiness as a lack of equipment. Jean's parents don't question it and thus leave to continue with their tour. But they and the rest of the X-Men don't notice as Scott is accidentally left behind and trapped within the danger room by a timed lock. While in any other school it would be nothing more than a harmless mistake. In this one it might prove deadly, as it's then that the danger room fires up and begins the beast's prepared course. Speed is key for a successful run of the gauntlet, meaning Scott can't simply sit it out, but must try his best to complete it with his own powers. Yet he doesn't even have the chance to start it on his own accord, as the floor beneath him suddenly snaps up and hurls him forward. He grabs onto a swinging bar to break his fall, but it's actually just a dummy, and he thus lands harshly on the ground. Before he can get back up, a giant iron roller begins rushing towards him. The beast would have been able to dodge it, but Scott's not nearly as agile. While he hates ruining such expensive training equipment, he has no choice but to destroy it and many subsequent traps to survive the course. And that he does, as we next see him escaping the soundproof room, just as Jean's parents are driving off from their pleasant visit. But as they do, a lone brooding figure can be seen watching them from a distance. He is Mastermind, a mutant illusionist and member of Magneto's evil brotherhood. He's been sent by the villain to locate the X-Men, but has struggled to find any trace of them. Even now, he's woefully unaware of their nearby presence and has finally written off his mission as a hopeless one. So he contacts Magneto using a watch-like gadget and tells him of his failure. The villain simply responds by ordering him to return to their base at once, where they'll try a different plan. So Mastermind walks out to a nearby field and waits for Quicksilver to extract him in a magnetically guided and thus noiseless plane. Soon enough the speedy mutant does and the two head off for their headquarters. After the events of last issue, you might assume that their base is still the stolen freighter. But it's then revealed that it's actually a massive asteroid orbiting Earth on which Magneto has constructed a habitable fortress. Inside, the arriving Quicksilver and Mastermind are greeted by a childishly giddy toad, eager to know if they were able to find and destroy the X-Men. 
But before they even have the chance to answer him, Toad begins mindlessly leaping onto Mastermind's back. The sudden motion knocks the illusionist over and forces him to trap Toad within a hallucinatory cloth. But it's then that Magneto arrives on the scene and orders Mastermind to let his teammate go. He reluctantly does, and the villain then begins divulging his new plan to defeat the X-Men. He puts it in the context of their current failure, but is then interrupted by Toad, who blames his teammates for this failure while claiming to be the only one truly loyal to him. Thus Magneto frustratingly silences his minion, as Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch then speak up and urge him to end his pursuit of the X-Men, as they don't think that the team will retaliate, even after what they'd done in the last issue. This advice enrages Magneto, who snaps at the siblings for undermining his authority and for foolishly assuming that the X-Men, or the people it protects, would ever leave them alone. Thus the siblings realize that there is no reasoning with Magneto and remain quiet as he finally reveals his plan, in which he'll be using Toad to lure the X-Men into a trap. But the issue then shifts focus to the X-Men themselves, and more specifically Scott, who's studying alone in his room. But it's then that he's interrupted by Bobby, who tells him of a televised track meet that he and the rest of the team are going to watch. The mention of the meet enrages Scott, as he rebukes and even blasts at Bobby for spending leisure time when there's so much danger looming around them. Taking the hint, Bobby's able to block the blast with Scott's door and then heads off to watch the broadcast with his other teammates and the professor. As they do, they notice a runner with particularly poor form who's lagging behind the others. Yet he then amazingly leaps over his competition and to the finish line. Such a move was never accounted for in the rules, but since it's not explicitly banned, the runner is granted first place. But he's also the champion in pole vaulting, hurdling, and the long jump, all of which he wins using his uncanny leaping ability. The X-Men realize that he must be a mutant, but a furious crowd thinks that he's somehow cheating. Like an angry mob they begin hounding him for his supposed fraud. Knowing that they'll harm him if they don't intervene, the X-Men rush to change into their costumes and save him. Thus the issue shifts forward a short time later, as the unruly crowd are about to pounce on the mutant runner. But it's then that the angel suddenly swoops in and snatches him away. The young hero flies to a waiting car, as Iceman and the Beast try to hold back the pursuing mob. But there's just too many of them, and they're quickly overwhelmed. To make matters worse, the crowd then blocks the team's escape route, forcing the X-Men to abandon their car and flee on foot. So they race off to a nearby subway station, where they board a crowded train and lose the mob. But now being so cramped and close to one another, the beast senses something disturbingly familiar about the mutant runner. He eventually realizes that he's Toad wearing a convincing mask, but it's then that the train makes a stop, giving the exposed villain a chance to flee into another station. But he doesn't get very far, as he slips on a slick sheet of ice. The angel then swoops in to apprehend him, but is forced to let him go as he's suddenly attacked by a torrent of metal parts. It's of course the doing of Magneto, who's arrived with his brotherhood to defeat the X-Men. His first move is to restrain the angel in a straight jacket of warped iron. The beast sees this and thus rushes over to free his teammate, but is stopped by the Scarlet Witch. She uses her hex power to force open a man's suitcase just as he races by. Thus the beast crashes into it, while also becoming tangled within a mess of clothing. Meanwhile, Mastermind is battling a disoriented Iceman, as he's created numerous illusory duplicates to confuse the hero. But Iceman comes up with a rather crude but effective countermeasure, as he fashions an ice bat and begins wildly swinging. Yet he's not able to land a solid hit on the actual mastermind, as the villain has blinded him in a cloud of smoke. Luckily Marvel Girl is outside of its range and is able to telekinetically whirl mastermind into the air. She plans to simply keep him suspended and incapable of casting illusions, but is forced to let him go if she's going to save Cyclops, who's been ambushed by Quicksilver. Yet he doesn't actually need the help, as he's able to shoo away the speedster with his optic beams, while still keeping Toad detained. Yet Magneto is more than willing to exchange Toad for the captured angel, and thus orders his brotherhood to flee. The X-Men of course pursue them, but are halted as Mastermind casts an illusory rhinoceros into a crowd of people. They don't know that it's not real, and thus begin fleeing in terror. They all stampede towards a single exit, creating a wall of people that prevent the X-Men from escaping the station. By the time they're finally outside, their foes have already fled in a magnetically guided spaceship, but the issue doesn't give the X-Men a chance to sulk, as it shifts forward a short time later to Magneto, who's interrogating the Angel within his asteroid fortress. 
The villain is after the location of the X-Men's headquarters, but the Angel is bravely refusing to give it up. Thus a frustrated Magneto claims that the alternative to revealing it is death. The Scarlet Witch overhears this and is appalled, as she never thought that Magneto would resort to murder. Yet I'm not sure how she could have thought this, especially considering the villain's earlier plan to blow up an entire country. But in any case, Magneto disregards her concerns as the whimpering of a weak girl, and then activates a device that begins blasting the angel with beams of light. They're completely harmless, but will prevent him from resting within his cell. But to make his imprisonment even worse, Magneto then activates a device that begins blaring a high-pitched siren. The villain is confident that these measures will prove unbearable and force the angel to reveal the location of his team's headquarters. Yet even after several hours have gone by, Magneto is shocked to see that the angel is still holding out. But the issue then shifts focus to the X-Men, who have led Toad to a deserted pier, where they're struggling to decide what to do with him next. They know that they can't set him free, yet also can't take him to their school, in case he's outfitted with a hidden tracker. Yet it seems that Toad decides for them, as he begins mindlessly muttering to himself, as if he's in a trance. He keeps repeating that he needs to return to Magneto, and claims that something is leading him to the villain. The X-Men are baffled at what's going on, but stand aside as Toad pulls down a sock to reveal a hidden beacon. He activates it, and in moments it summons an automated capsule to pick him up. Yet the X-Men decide to get in too, even if it may be a trap. Thus the five of them are taken to Magneto's asteroid, where Toad is the first to disembark. He's met by a surprised mastermind, who questions how he was able to escape the X-Men. Yet Toad is still in a mindless trance, and mumbles a half-answer. In the confusion, the beast emerges from behind a doorway and kicks Toad into mastermind. The illusionist is knocked down, but gets back up in time to turn the beast's legs into jelly. The hero knows that it's just a trick, but is rendered immobile nonetheless. So Mastermind pulls out a pistol to finish him off, but in doing so accidentally breaks his mental concentration and ends the illusion. Thus the beast dodges the shot he fires, while Cyclops then melts the pistol from which it came. Knowing that they're outmatched, Mastermind and a back-to-normal Toad flee to warn Magneto of the X-Men's arrival. But the villain is already aware and has outfitted himself with a device that can amplify his powers, enough to control every bit of metal on the entire asteroid. His first target is Cyclops, whose visor he smothers with a metal sheet. Marvel Girl then races to remove it, but is suddenly restrained by a pair of robotic arms that spring out from the wall. The Beast and Iceman then arrive on the scene, yet only to be blasted by tiny flames. Luckily Iceman's able to freeze their jets, while the Beast destroys the arms restraining Marvel Girl, and then removes the sheet over Cyclops's visor. Watching them from a hidden camera is Magneto, who's about to press a button that'll jettison the X-Men into space. But Scarlet Witch protests, and then casts a hex that causes his control panel to short-circuit. An enraged Magneto then motions to attack her, but is halted by Quicksilver, who's sworn to protect her. Still, the villain is prepared to punish them both, yet any would-be brawl is then interrupted by an optic blast that suddenly tears through the wall. Emerging from it is Cyclops, who urges Quicksilver to betray Magneto and join their side. But the speedy mutant refuses, for as much as he hates the villain, he and his sister are obligated to serve him after he saved their lives. Thus Cyclops is forced into a battle with Quicksilver, as the other X-Men are desperately trying to free the Angel. In their way is a sheet of unbreakable glass that not even the beast's immense strength can shatter. But Marvel Girls can or at least that of her telekinesis, as she mentally hurls a nearby canister into the glass. It shatters and the angel escapes, but he and his teammates are then cornered by a massive alien monster. Of course it's just one of Mastermind's illusions, a fact that the angel knows all too well, as he harmlessly flies right through it. On the other side are a fleeing Toad and Mastermind, who are then saved by Magneto, as he hurls at the X-Men a large grenade. Instead of exploding, it shatters into a thousand tiny darts. Amazingly, all four of the X-Men are able to dodge them. But before Magneto has a chance to hurl another, a massive rumble is felt throughout the entire fortress. It sources the asteroid beneath them, as it's beginning to break apart. Someone must have accidentally triggered the self-destruct sequence that Magneto had built in. While his fortress may be crumbling around him, Magneto sees it as an opportunity to finally destroy the X-Men. So he grabs a hold of Cyclops, who's exhausted from his battle with Quicksilver, and tosses him into a chamber that'll soon be exposed to the vacuum of space. 
He thinks that the other X-Men are there too, but he's actually mistaken, as they're in the same section that he is. Toad informs him of this mistake, but Magneto doesn't care, as it's at least an opportunity to destroy Cyclops. But at this point the asteroid is on the brink of fully breaking apart, forcing Magneto and his brotherhood to flee from their fortress. The X-Men would be wise to do the same, but would never leave Cyclops behind. So Iceman creates a bridge of ice that briefly connects the two sections of the asteroid. But seeing that he's training against the force of space itself, he can't hold it very long. Thus the angel must fly through and retrieve Cyclops in record time. Amazingly he does, and the team then race to the closest escape pod. With hardly a second to spare, the X-Men are jettisoned back to Earth as the asteroid behind them explodes. They return to the same pier where they had been picked up and then leave to return home. There, they prepare to give the professor a report of the day's events. But he tells them that they don't need to, as he's been mentally following them this whole time. A confused beast asks if his powers are back, but the professor reveals that he had never lost them. Instead he'd faked his injury as part of the team's final exam, which was to see if they could handle themselves without his help. Considering what they'd done that day, it's no surprise that they all passed with flying colors. Thus the issue subsequently ends as the professor reveals that their training period is over, and as an editor's note teases even grander adventures to come. That concludes Uncanny X-Men 5, and another episode of the Classic Comic Archive. But as always, I would like to offer a brief review of this issue. Overall, I thought that this was a solid, if somewhat derivative story. At times it felt like a rather blatant rehash of the events of last issue. In both, the X-Men raid Magneto's fortress and fight the Brotherhood, with the evil mutants ultimately escaping after their base is destroyed. The only major difference was the setting, and while both worked as fun and exciting stories, I would have preferred this issue to have brought something new to the table. But in any case, let me know what you thought of this issue and the video, and feel free to suggest other classic comics for me to cover. Thanks for watching.